Time in is everything. Shout hallelujah. Timing is everything. And I want to believe that by the end of this seminar tomorrow morning, your timing of life will change. Your timing of success will change. Your time of advancement will change. That will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say that will be my testimony. Say that will be my testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat. Take your seat. Amen. Of course, you would have gotten the message that there will be no evening section tomorrow. It has been collapsed into the morning service tomorrow, 9.30. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is as the Lord leads us. Amen. We don't have our way here. The Holy Ghost will always have his way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Timing is important. Timing is critical. For your dream for your goals. Without timing, they just are nothing but emptiness. Urgency of timing is a spiritual force. Urgency of timing is a spiritual force. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happened to them all. Time and opportunities happened to them all. Shout hallelujah. One thing you must not do is to come through this seminar and remain the same. Every young person here, you can have a timeline of 10 years to transform your life completely. Amen? Let's say that in this seminar, your desire was to be before an engineer and then that has evaporated over time and with this message and you still want to be an engineer you can go back and still become engineer within the next 10 years true or false no are you hearing me in the next 10 years you can set out to be an engineer in the next 10 years you can bring an end poverty into your life, into your family. Timing. Timing. As a result of the message, you can choose to never be a beggar in your life. As a result of this message, you can, when Bright was leading prayer, he said, the message now is what our young people everywhere needs to hear. But what I would like to see is the young people here maximize it first. Praise the Lord. If the young people here we maximize the message and profit from it and achieve something from it, then it can make all the difference. Praise the Lord. I remember sometimes in Munich I was teaching and I said, how many of the women here drive? And there were very few of them. Very few of them. And I said to them, why are you not driving? And I said, all the women you should go and learn how to drive. And then I said, the first person that will get a driver's license, was it 200 or 250 euro? I promised them. I can't remember, but sorry. Was it 500? No, it wasn't up to 500. I think it's 250. Praise the Lord. And then some people went for it. Who was the best first person to get? I think it was Sister Miracle. One of them. One of them. Just because of that, one of them was the first person to get a driver's license. And many of them went to learn how to drive. 
because somebody inspired them. Why don't you learn how to drive? In the same way, many of you young people here, you don't know how to drive. You don't know how to drive. Why? You can't explain it. You are carrying a phone that is more than the driving school. Amen? Is that not true? You are carrying a phone that is more than the driving school. And now you can learn how to drive in just two months. Two months. You can learn how to drive in two months. You can perfect your driving within five, six months. Praise the Lord. And you can arrange to be an Uber driver in less than a year. So you go from hopelessness to hopefulness in less than 12 months. In less than 12 months. You can be an Uber driver with a difference in 12 months as a result of this message. And then you become something. And then you begin to make something. And then you become profitable to yourself. Profitable to the society. Profitable to the community. That is just one example. That is just one example of what you can do. Young people, you can set a timeline. I just said the one of Uber. The one of Uber in 12 months you can transform from somebody always looking for transport and the way to eat to somebody that have your own business. You become an Uber driver. Many people are doing it and they are doing well. Many graduates are doing it and they are doing well. What is the problem? Is it that it's difficult to be a driver? No. Like I said, your telephone is more than driver's license. To learn how to drive. Your telephone. On the average, if I check the phone you are carrying, it can teach you how to drive. And then you carry a license. But why are you carrying the phone? No. You are on social media, but you have never been there on the social media. You watch others. You talk about others. When will somebody talk about you? It's called television. Tell a vision. Tell what? A vision. Whose vision are you telling? Whose vision are you telling? The race is not to the swift. Nor the battle for the strong. But the Bible says it's only time and opportunity that affects you. Meaning that the way you maximize your opportunity is what determines what happens to you. Timing. You can't waste time. I told you yesterday, time and health or health and time are raw materials for life. And for you to waste it is for you to mortally wound opportunities that come to you. You wound opportunities that come to you by wasting your time. By wasting your health. Jesus said the time comes when no man can work. He says the time comes. The world has set certain things in place. You can vote until the age of 18. You can get to the university until the age of 16. They want to change that. I pray they will never be able to change it. Because some of the policies that are made in this country are discriminational. If a child is making fast progress, let him progress. If he's able to enter by 16, let him enter. If somebody enters by 17, let him enter. If others enters by 18, let him. you can't bring people down because you want another part of the country to catch up. It doesn't work like that. And I thank God that some somebody sensible in the Senate have said that what the Minister of Education said is his personal opinion. Praise the Lord. He said, it's personal opinion. He said, we don't rule this country by personal opinion. He said, the law says 18. is 18. He said, you can't just come out. And I thank God for that senators or those senators that are opening up their mouth. And they said, the law stands as it is. And which is true. 
The law says 18, sorry, 16, you can enter into university. You can't just come out because of you are minister of education. You are just a minister for a period of time. And I pray he won't last. I pray he will not lie. He will not last. In Jesus' mighty name. Anybody that wants to take the nation backwards will never last. Other countries produce professors at the age of 21. And you want to pull the nation back. You say that some people are not able to handle maturity in university. Blah, blah, blah. How is that your business? If he doesn't handle, let him say in the university extra two years. But he has entered. Praise the Lord. And so you can't punish everybody Maybe because those in the north cannot make it. You can't. And I pray, and you need to pray that such ministers will not last. And I thank God that senators are thinking. He said, we don't make laws in this country by you speaking your opinion. And the youth should pray also. When you see something that will affect you, you should stand in prayer and say, Lord, this will not stand. This law cannot even stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that even when I heard it, I was contemplating filing a legal argument against it, getting a lawyer. But then I realized that, okay, the senators have corrected it. They've corrected it. You can't take us backwards. You can take us backwards. Professors are being raised in Europe at the age of 22. And you want to take Nigeria back to, six, to 18. 18. And so whatever that will kill your time, you must kill it. Whatever that will waste your health, you must waste it. Because at the end of the day, your health and your time, they are two ingredients that you must have to make progress in life. They are two ingredients. The Bible says time and chance happens to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. Young people, you must learn to be creative. Learn how to plant. Learn how to replant. Learn how to culture if necessary. Planting is one thing. Replanting another time is, an, is something else. Don't be at those that we give up because you planted first and it failed. No. Failure is part of the success story. You need to understand. Failure is what? Part of the success story. I would rather follow a man that failed five times than follow the one that never failed. And the only way never to fail in life is never to do anything. Are you hearing me? The only reason, the only way you can avoid failure in life, the only way you can avoid failure in life is not to do anything. That's the only way you can avoid failure. But as long as you will do something, you will fail at one time or the other. But failure is a learning process. It is part of the journey towards success. I have failed in many things. I have failed in many businesses. I'm telling you the truth. But you keep moving forward. My father in the Lord told me, he said, he said, son, failure is just a term of adjustment. You readjust and move forward. You readjust, you move forward. So, failure is not a defeat. Failure is just a delay. And if you're ever going to succeed, you must fail one way or the other. And I'm telling you, you go and look at the great men and then they will tell you how many times they failed. Go and ask Bill Gates. Steve Jobs talked about his failures before he eventually succeeded in Apple. He sold everything he had. The greatest success on earth today started with so many failures. Who is the owner of Alibaba? Something Chan. What's his name again? Jack Ma, right? The owner of Alibaba. Listen to his story. He said, people see Alibaba now and they want to be like Alibaba. He said, it wasn't like that. He said, for years, they labored and labored and labored and labored. And they, they applied to many banks to give them money, money to just start. He said, no bank will give them money. 
He said it was terrible years, not days, not months. He said it was terrible time. He said it was difficult. It was difficult. It was difficult. He said on one day, one day they got a break. One day they got a break. And that one day was just somebody that chose to give them a chance. And that's how Ali Baba was born. He said, but people see Ali Baba, they just thought that, blah, 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 and then he came up, and then they succeeded, and then it was, he said, it's not like that. Mark Zuckerberg told about his story. He said they were in a garage. He said many years, they didn't have money to start um, Facebook or any of these things. They didn't have the money. No bank will finance them. They didn't have the resources. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. He said for years, Yes, he said sometimes they didn't have light. They have to labor in the night. So when they see Mark Zuckerberg, everybody wants to say, oh, he just made it very easily. No success story is told like that except a lie. Did you hear what I said? Success story always involves trials, failures, disappointment, discouragement. Eventually, God singing your faith opens the door for you somewhere. God singing your faith. And it opens the door for that. You don't know that success incorporates humiliation. How many of you have heard about the game called Monopoly? It's a game. Monopoly. Has any of you played it? Monopoly was designed by a, a frustrated engineer that nobody wants to give a job. People frustrated him so much. So, so he was thinking, what will he do? What will he do? <clears throat> so he came up with this game called Monopoly in the U.S. And then he took it to the toy companies. Not one wants to deal with him because they said, this doesn't make sense. This does not make sense. He said, <clears throat> who will play this? It doesn't make sense. And so it was disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after. Then, eventually, one toy company, after so many failures, decided to call him back and say, let's give it a try. And then he supplied them. And as he supplied them, people bought they call for more. People bought. And it is recorded in one particular year or season following the report. They printed more Monopoly paper money than actual, actual US dollars. Are you hearing me? They printed more Monopoly. Have you seen $5, $10, go to jail, um, release from jail, buy property in Mayfair, by crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And the guy became a success. Until today, Monopoly is the best-selling children game in the world today. But you don't know the disappointments under it. Many of you, you are afraid to step out. You are afraid to step out. Peter, you can tell that Peter stepped out of the boat and he was sinking. But Peter will tell you, but I walked on water. Have you tried? Amen? Peter will tell you, yes, I sank, but I walked on water at least for a distance. Try. Try. What is faith? What is faith? Now, faith is. Now, faith is. A young person must acquire skill. You must acquire skill. Skill is developing talent. 419 is not a business. Bet Niger is not a business. Are you hearing me? Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Bet Niger is not a business. 419 is not a business. 
drug business is not a business. It's blood. It's blood business. Fake product is not a business. It will give you fake life. Praise the Lord. But there is a life that comes in Christ and it comes with benefits. It comes with peace. Praise the Lord. You can start something and believe God for it. And as you are believing God, the problem is that we don't understand the way God works. And so we are looking at God as a microwave. But God did not invent microwave. Amen? I, I, I want to show you some example of the time of God. At the age of 75, God promised Abraham, Abraham, a son, right? Isn't it? God promised him a son. How long was it before the son came forth? It took 25 years. 25 years of waiting. Waiting while the man was getting older. Abraham had every reason to doubt and be in unbelief. He was already 75. God should hurry up before he gets older. And God did not hurry up. It took 25 years for the promise to come to pass. That's the timeline of God for the person that God called my friend. And you, you have even gotten to be the friend of God. Abraham was a friend of God. And yet God made him a, prophet, a promise. And it took 25 years. And then God gave him a promise concerning his children. They will go into captivity for 400 years from captivity to the time that the prophet, pr promise was made. How long was it? Have you looked at these things from the Bible? Have you understood how God moves with timing? The Bible tells us it was almost 220 years between the promise of the captivity and when it eventually happened. It was over 200 years. 200 years. How many generations have lived through that years? We need to read the Bible. We need to read the word of God. We need to understand the timing of God. God is not a magician. He will never be a magician. When you say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forevermore, you will understand that the timing of God will stand still forever. Praise the Lord. Jacob. How long was it that Jacob walked for Laban? And Laban cheated him and deceived him. How many years was it? 20 years. He gave him the wrong wife. He said, you have cheated me. Give me my right wife. He said, well, you can have your right wife, but you have to serve seven years again. How many of you will still serve in that place? How many will not run away? And so he served again seven years. And the Bible said it was like nothing for Jacob because of the love. Praise the Lord. Many of us, we are not there. Whereby service is nothing because of the joy that is set before you. You serve. You are under authority. And for the joy that is set before you, what you have to endure, you don't narrate it as a pain. You endure it as a good soldier. You endure it. We are a generation that is in a hurry. We want things to happen in a year or two or three or four. We think about it. If it doesn't happen, God is not with us. But if you look at the timeline of God, you wouldn't see that even in our fathers of faith. How, was, how long was it before from the time God spoke about redeem? Redeem, redeem you know here, isn't it? From the time God spoke to the founder to it when everybody began to hear redeem, how long was it? You've not checked. Go and check. It was over 20 years. Over 20 years. The same redeem. God said it would be heard worldwide. Worldwide. It was not heard. It was not heard. It was years and years and years and years. But we don't like to read such history. We just want a quick solution. And God said, for the vision is for an appointed time. He said, though it tarry, because it will tarry, but wait for it. But we don't want the things that tarry. 
No, we don't want, we, we are like little children that planted a corn. And then, and then every day he will go and open it to see if it has started growing and cover. And then every day he will go and open it and say, why is this corn not growing, mama? Mama said, leave it, don't open it. And then he keep opening it and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. Because he was in a hurry. And so the corn never grew out. And then there was another boy that planted the corn. And the mama said, give it time to sprout out. And then the thing sprouted out. And the little boy was watering it. And the little boy came every day. He watered and said, Mama, this thing is not growing fast. I want to buy corn. I want to give you corn, Mama. And then he will water, water, water. He said, Mama, this corn is growing. Fast. He said, let me check on that to see if it's growing on that. He will open the soil. He will close it again. He will open and close it. He said, Mama, this corn is not growing as fast. And then the corn died. Praise the Lord. Another one planted. And then the things sprouted out. And then began to grow. And the head of the corn came out. And the boy looked at it and said, Mama, finally the corn is here. It's corn. And the mama said, leave it, son. He said, no, 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 mama. You, you, you can eat it the way it is. He said, mama said, no, 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 no. It, it, it is still growing. The boy said, no, mama. No, mama. Mama, mama, it's my corn. I will eat it when I want. He said, no, no, no. He pulled it out. He opened it. There was nothing. He said, Mama, what happened to the corn? The vision is an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. Many are dealing with aborted lifestyle. Many are dealing with aborted dreams. No, that's what many are dealing with. Praise the Lord. We need to understand that God doesn't work like that. Joseph was in Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to prison. Before he got to even to the palace. How many years? It was 13 years. It was 13 years. Amen. It was 13 years. Moses. How long was it that God watched him in the wilderness suffering? It was 40 years. He was there in the scorching sun. Without hope. Well, Leonard, it was 40 years. By the time the Lord called him, he was 80. And then by the time the Lord used him for the next 40 years again. And so they said that life, Moses' life was 40, 40, 40. True. 40 years before in the wilderness. 40 years in the wilderness. And then 40 years God called him. And then 40 years again back in the wilderness. So Moses was 40, 40, 40, 40. How many of you would like that? But you answer Moses. You answer Moses. Maybe you should check what is behind the names you pick up from the Bible. Praise the Lord. And then for how long David waited? God said, I have a man after my own heart. Samuel, go and anoint him. And Samuel comes and anoint him. And then after the anointing, what happened to David? He was practically on the run for his life. And you say, this type of anointing, Lord, take it back. He got anointed. Saul wanted to kill him. And he was on the run. For how many years? 15 years. Say 15. 15 years. David was on the run. He had the opportunity to kill Saul. But for the joy that was set before him, he refused to kill Saul. If you were David, will you spare Saul? If you were David, will you have spared Saul? No, that's the truth. He said, oh, kill those that want to kill you. You will use scripture and cover it. Praise the Lord. It was 15 years. Egyptian captivity, how long was it? A whole nation was in captivity. God said 400 years. 400 years came. 400 years passed. You know why? Because the people did nothing. The captivity continued. When you say, God said it, and I believe it, that settles it, it doesn't. God says 400 years. 400 years came. 400 years passed. Nothing happened. And so they spent extra 30 years in captivity until God delivered them. The Babylonian captivity, when God, because of disobedience, because of sin, God puts his people in the hand of the enemies. You know what it is? 
you are you fall into the hand of your enemy for 70 years as a discipline. As a discipline. God has not dealt with us like that in this generation. Ever faithful, ever merciful. God is so full of love because of Jesus for our generation. And many of you don't know how to serve. You don't know how to wait. And so you destroy them. You said, I've been there for three years. Nothing, nothing is happening. You don't know the timing of God and the purposes of God is beyond three years. The thing that is rebellious in you until it dies, God cannot manifest. God does not bless rebels. Who is a rebel? Lawless people are rebels. God will not bless rebels. And timeless people will not command God's blessing. You will see that even as we teach and talk about timing, tomorrow people will still come to church late. They will still come to church late. And they've been told that timing affects everything. Timing affects everything. Praise the Lord. Somebody gives you an appointment. The person says, you must be there at 3 o'clock. He says, 3 o'clock. And that appointment is important to you, not to him. And so you drag yourself and you got there five minutes after three. And they say he has left. And you got angry. He doesn't understand. I don't blame him. Because he has this big office and big cars and everything. He doesn't understand what happens. Are you serious? Who needs who? No, who needs who? He doesn't need you. You need him. And you are late. And he left. You were late. Many people have punctured their destiny because of lateness. Now they've given it a name in the church. <clears throat> Do you know the name? Near Success Syndrome, NSS. Near Success Syndrome. That's the name we've given it in church. Yes. And now we make it demonic. We cast out the devil of Near Success Syndrome. Praise the Lord. And so we took a normal, stupid problem and then bring it to the church and then put devil into it and start casting the devil out. We create job for delivery, deliverance ministries. Amen. You see somebody that says that everything a Christian says, everything I touch, it doesn't work. Everything I do, it doesn't work. And then you say, he says, and then you come to your pastor. Pastor, look at this. Hmm. Um, it looks like there is a devil. You need deliverance. Mm. And then they organize deliverance for you. But the Bible says that the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is what? Hard. So, another scripture says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So, if you are a Christian, everything you touch does not work. First thing, where do you go? Look at yourself. Are you sinful? What is sin? Sin is a transgression of the law. That's what sin is. That's what Bible defense is. Sin is a transgression of the law. So, anywhere you are walking in transgression or lawlessness, it becomes a sin in your life. And I love what Papa Higgins was teaching about. He met a man. The man has been sick. And everybody has prayed for this man to get healed. Different healing evangelists and ministers have prayed for him. And he didn't get healed. And eventually he made an appointment to see Papa Hagen. And then, you know, when Papa Hagen met with him, what was the problem? The man felt that in his heart that he has seen that God may not want to heal him. Amen? And he was a businessman. And the doctors have told him, sell your business because you can die any day from now. Sell your business. So when he put the business for sale, they were offering him below the value of the business. The man was just, I think, 50-something years old or 60-something. I can't remember the exact year. And then he didn't want to sell the business. He didn't want to die also. And so now he contacted Papa Higgins. And then Papa Higgins said to him, what's the problem? He said he believed that he has sinned. 
And that's why God is not healing him. And then Papa Higgin asked him, which bank did you rob? He said, God forbid, I did not rob any bank. And Papa Higgin asked him, who have you killed? He said, God forbid, I didn't kill anybody. He said, well, Papa Higgin said anyway, whatever sin that you have committed, have you committed it 70 times 7 daily? He said, God forbid, even what I'm talking about, I've not done it 70 times 7, which is 409, right? I've not done that in a day. Not even in the whole 10 years I'm talking about, I've not done such a thing. Then Papa Higgin said to him, what is the problem? He said, the man said, a businessman, he said, even the sin he is struggling with is more of the sin of omission, not of commission. And that thing registered. That message registered in me. Papa Higgin said that sins of commission, we easily deal with it. Amen? Adultery, you deal with it because you can see it. Fornication, you deal with it, isn't it? Robbery, you can deal with it, isn't it? Um, hatred and all that, you can deal with it. What about the sin of omission? What is the sin of omission? The things you ought to do and you fail to do. That's the sin of omission. And nobody, can, nobody knows it. It's you that knows it. The opportunity you're supposed to use to help, you refuse to help. The cry for assistance, you heard, you shut your ear. Nobody saw you. You are the only one there, and you covered your ear. And so the man said, I am more with the sin of omission than the sin of commission. And God said to Pahagin, pray for him. I will heal him and tell him I'm forgiving him. And Pahagin said that to him. He repented. And the man said, I could have prayed more the way I should. I didn't pray. I could have studied more the way I should. I didn't study. And the man said, being a businessman, he said, I could have given more in terms of finances to the church, but I failed to. I could have paid more tight in the house of God, but I failed to because I had the money, but I failed to do all these things. And these were sins of omission. And, and Papa Higgins said something. He said, the church does not even deal with the sins of omission. And we need to, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. And so, when, you know, then Papa Higgin added something there, which I believe also is true. He said, when you pray and apply your faith and it didn't work, he said, the first place you should check, check the sin of unforgiveness in your life. Hello? Are you with me? Let's open to Mark. Mark 11. Mark 11, are we there? Verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Jesus tells us to have our faith in God. Not in ourselves, not in our consciences, not in our, you know, the, the, the people that talk about mind, uh, what do they call it? I will get to that. And that is a useless thing they talk about. You said, your mind is God. God is your mind. They talk about foolishness, what they don't understand. They talk about your inner strength, inner ability, and all that. We are not meant to have our inner strength and inner ability. We are supposed to have our strength in God. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our strength. Jesus is what? Our peace. So Jesus said, have faith in God, not in yourself. Not in your qualifications. He said, have faith in God. Verse 23, for assuredly I said to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Shout hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. That is as simple as it is, isn't it? But 
Remember, Jesus did not finish in verse 24. Look at verse 25 and 26. It is still the same discussion, isn't it? And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything, anything against anyone, anything against anyone, is that in your Bible? Forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Praise the Lord. So what is the number one faith killer? Unforgiveness. Number one, faith killers. Number one, faith killers. Number one, faith killers. And Papa Higgins said, if you pray and believe God and it's not coming to pass, he said, if I were you, the first place I would check, the first place I would check, the first place I would check is the area of forgiveness. Is the area of forgiveness. Is the area of forgiveness. And I told you yesterday, we all have opportunity to sow seed and to plant seed. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said there is a time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to plant and a time to harvest. What if you didn't plant? Galatians 6 said that God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that you will reap. What if you don't sow? You will reap nothing. And there are many people that, re, that sow nothing and believe to... Listen, you must begin to learn to plant your harvest with your seed. Praise the Lord. Whatever harvest you are believing God for, you program it. You plant it with your seed. Obama was planning to be a president of America. He started 25 years before he became he was planning for it. He understood that as a black man, his chances were very small. So what did he do? He took a longer time to plan. A longer time to plan. A longer time. So if you know that you are disadvantaged already by a process, by a situation, by whatever, what do you do? Give yourself more time to plan. Success, the Bible tells us, comes through hard work and planning. Hard work and what? Planning. Amazingly, he didn't talk about prayer. We have a generation that has been confused with prayer. Lord, give me money. That's useless prayer. Lord, give me money. Give me money. Give me money. Give me money. It's useless prayer. What do you need to do? If you know what the harvest you are expecting, start planting seed for it. Start planting seed for it. And as you are planting that seed, get a farmer that has been there and plant under the farmer. You hear what I just said? It will make your job easier. There are things I have learned from my pastors that makes my life easier as a minister. Because they've gone through it. Praise the Lord. Very often I will share with my children and I will say, Pastor Chris taught us this. And then Papa Hagen said this. Do you understand? Because you learn from some people. You don't try to find fault with their message. You take their message in totality because you know that these people have gone ahead of you. And if you follow them, you will make fewer mistakes. If you have a mentor, you will reduce your mistakes. And your year of mentorship is the most important years in your life. And so if you have no mentor, you have not learned anything. Have you seen the way we are having problems, even as a church? While we are working here, we have had many people that say they are Christians, and I will call them just at the back, walking. Are you born again? Yes. Explain to me how you are born again. I go to church. I don't steal. I don't do this. I don't do that. And they are serious saying that they are born again. Born again. 
I asked one jury, the Bible, he says it's not his job. He says it's the job of the pastor. And he was serious. He said, it's not my job to read the Bible. Here, Walker. He says it's the job of the pastor. I remember one of them that had worked, when I worked with Engineer Fela, here. I asked him, I said, give me five scriptures. You say you are a teacher in your school, in your, in your church, in your church. I said, give me five scriptures. He said, a pastor, he can't remember any now. I said, you are a teacher. You are a teacher. Like Jesus was shocked with Nicodemus. I said, you are a teacher in a big church. Big church. He said, they tell them what to teach. I said, okay. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Give it to me. He said, pastor, not now. And Jinafela was there. It was there. The guy was sound, educated. 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 Many generations of Christians don't even understand the basis of Christianity. Praise the Lord. I was asking, Pastor Isaac was in the meeting, I was asking somebody in the worship team, what is the meaning of gospelology? It is written here, daily. What is the meaning of gospelology? He kept quiet. Were you not there? Were you not shocked? He was well educated. What is gospelology? He was looking at me. What was it that he said? Something crazy. Pastor said to him, but it is written. It is written there. It is written. What is gospelology? He was. Enoch knew what gospelology was when he was. How many years was it that Enoch can quote gospelology? Three years. Okay, Enoch, he understood gospelology. And I was, I was looking at a full-grown man. I said, what is gospelology? He didn't know. And I shook my head. And Levi, if I ever get somebody like that in the worship team, I will deal with you. Because eventually, when people come to the worship team, you should first let them understand the message and the doctrine. Do you understand? Everybody that will join the worship team should read the book, service, the pathway to divine health first. And after they have read it, you need to make sure they understand it. And then you need to ask them, do you understand gospelology? Are you hearing me? You don't just because people join and then you bring them there to lead and they have no understanding what the ministry is all about. This ministry depends on the application of the word to get results. We don't have any other system we don't have any shortcut. And the reason why many people get frustrated is because they come here believing God for a shortcut and they found that there is no shortcut here. We don't have shortcut. We have straight cut. Amen? And Jesus said, the way is narrow and difficult is the path that leads to life. It is written there. Anybody that John, let them read. Ask them, do you understand what you have read? If I start calling all of you up now, you will be shocked. Not to quote it, but to explain it. Because until you understand what gospelology is, you will not prosper in this ministry. Why? We said that the application of the word is what gives you divine realities. When you apply the word in the area of your health, you will get healed. When you apply the word in the area of your, of your finances, your finances will change. When you apply the word in the area of your business, your business will change. Application. Application. We are, we are not, listen, I am not here to pour oil on you for you to break through. No, you will break down. Because oil may enter into your eyes. Amen. Amen. So take the word and walk out your wonders. Walk out your miracles. Jesus said, this son shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, every believer is a miracle worker. I am not a supersonic pastor. Did you hear what I said? I am not what? I am not a supersonic pastor. I am one of those that will teach you how to be a disciple and you become a disciple. Amen? Amen. We are meant to raise disciples. We are not meant to raise members. 
And it is you being a disciple that transforms your life and makes you profitable in the kingdom of God. You learn discipline. You learn excellence. You learn timeliness. These are the qualities of the spirit. These are the qualities of the spirit. And so, if, if rehearsal is 3 o'clock, which is 3 o'clock, am I right? 3 o'clock is 3 o'clock. Anybody that comes 5 minutes after 3 should stand out. I didn't say she should not be, or he should not be part of it, but the person should stand out for a while as a punishment. Because the message, if not applied in the department, will not, you know, it will not yield any result. And it is that reason, if, you, if rehearsal is three o'clock, by quarter to three, the head of the department should be seated down in the place. What do you do? You stay there, you pray. You pray for those that are coming. You pray that they will make it on time. That is the way you run a department. You invest your time. Quarter to three, you are seated. You observe, everything is clear. And you know what is going on. And then you check everybody that's coming. Even the way they dress matters. The way they dress matters. Except now you have a situation where you, you are attending to something that pastor knows or pastor Zeke knows and so you got an exemption and said okay the department knows you can continue and they can continue until you join them you, you, you are asking about more time for rehearsal isn't it and that is not going to fly until you make good use of what you have now amen it is only when you have made a good use of what you have you can ask for extra because at the end of the day you waste it no time is ever enough no amount of money is ever enough. It is planning that makes it sufficient. You come for a hazard, you spend 15 minutes to pray. Why? You didn't come for prayer meeting. You have wasted 15 minutes. Amen? What is that? You come together, let us pray. You take the prayer as a leader. You open the service. You open the rehearsal. It shouldn't take more than three minutes. And so you save 12 minutes. And then in between when you chat and argue, you cut it down. Hello? We have a limited time. Okay, okay. That time you say, what do you think? 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 That is, that is democracy. And we run theocracy, not democracy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So some of them, in ineffectiveness of leadership robs us of results we should have as leaders. Stand on what you have been taught. Apply it in your department. You will see the result. That's what gospelology is all about. That HODs will apply gospelology in their department. And you will see the result. Application of the word. Application of the word. Application of the word. Application of the word. That's what makes all the difference. And to, if you don't apply the word, you will misapply yourself. And that's the way it is. That is the way it should be. Every member of this ministry should understand that gospelology is what the Lord has given us. Application of the word of God to manifest divine nature, divine reality, divine truth. Praise the Lord. Somebody can prophesy and you get a miracle. That is good. Somebody can give you word of wisdom, word of knowledge. That is good. Somebody can worship God here and we all feel inspired and all that. That is good. But at the end of the day, when we are face to face with the devil, what do you do? The word. What do you do? The word. What do you do? The word. It is the sword of the spirit. With the shield of faith, we can quench every fiery dart of the enemy. The word. The word. And so if somebody should rob you of the word, the person has made you impotent as a Christian. Anywhere you go where the word is not properly taught to you as a Christian, they have made, they have disabled you spiritually. 
Praise the Lord. Get the word working in your life. Divine health is a reality only when you apply the word. Divine, divine health is a truth from God's word. And I gave you one scripture. Take that one scripture. Walk with that one scripture. Exodus 23, 25. Walk with one scripture. Get that one scripture into your spirit. 25, 26 verses. Walk with it. Very simple. And you shall serve the Lord your God. That's what God said. And God said, I will bless your bread and your water. And God said, I will take sickness and disease from the midst of thee. That's what God said. And Jesus said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So God said it. And now you took it. And now you acted upon it because faith is an act. Until you act the word of God in faith, it will not work for you. That's the way it goes. You set a timeline for your faith. I just told you, Paul, every young person here, in 10 years, you can be a graduate of engineer. You can become a scientist. You can become a doctor. Maybe doctor is a bit because of the seven years time frame. But every other thing, anybody here as a youth, in 10 years, you still have opportunity. And I'm telling you that. Um, where's Rachel? Um, she came for a meeting and I asked her, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you say you wanted to do? Medical surgeon? Sorry? She wants to do medicine and surgeon. And surgery. That's a good one. That's a good one. Praise the Lord. But she took jam this year. It didn't work out. Well, she, she got something below. Praise the Lord. And I asked her, what do you want to do? She said she's thinking going to the politics. I said, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't try that. Praise the Lord. Don't go there. Because that is a, a, a longer route that may never work out. And I said to her something. I said, look, you will go back to that jump next year. Praise the Lord. I said to her, you will go back to that jump next year. You know why? Because he said, Pastor, help me. So she said, Pastor, I want to be what I desire. I want to do medicine and surgery. Even hearing that alone is an inspiration. And so she took jam this year, didn't favor her. And she will take it again next year. And it will favor her. Praise the Lord. Uh, because now she comes under a different authority. She will take jump again next year. And as she takes it, she will do well. Amen. And she will do what she wants to do. The only thing, like I told her, I said, if you are willing and obedient. And I believe, I believe you said you are ready for that change. Right? Because when you change that one thing, everything else changes in your life. Everything else. And so, in 10 years, she can look back and say, I didn't know I would make it. But, but, daughter, somebody will give you a help, helping hand. You will get there. The enemy has stolen so much from her. I know it because I've been in the case now. The enemy has robbed her a lot. And God said the vision is for an appointed time. She has had things that would have made her to leave the church. I know it. I know it, but she endured. Come here. She endured. And then eventually... The time has come. The time has come. Just stay where you are. And there is nobody that God does not remember. But it is for an appointed time. An appointed time is a specific, specified time of God over your life. Over your life. They asked Jesus, will you now 
Will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said, it is not your business to know these things. But Jesus did not say it's not possible. He said it's not for you to know the time and the season that God has placed in his own authority. But what was the problem with Jerusalem? You go back and read. When the Bible says when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, he wept over Jerusalem. You know why? Jerusalem rejected the Messiah. He says, from now, Jerusalem, you are left on your own. He said, your enemies will embark around you. People don't know the problem of Jerusalem till today. Go and look at it. Jesus made the pronouncement. And since that time, Jerusalem have not had peace. That's why they are still fighting. You know why? God said, Jerusalem, you reject my prophet and you kill those I sent to you. He said, therefore, you are left on your own. He said, because you will miss the time of your visitation. Time of visitation takes a moment. A moment the anointing will come. A moment the Holy Ghost will break upon you. A moment the hand of God will come upon you. A moment something will happen to you. If you have been faithful. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Call on the name of Jesus three times. Take the help you need. Now. 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 Take it. The power of the Holy Ghost. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Take the power of the Holy Ghost. A change has come. A change has come. There was a girl in Munich. She came from Cameroon. Every exam she sat, she failed. The uncle brought her. And she couldn't pass any exam. The uncle brought her. And it happened and it happened and happened. And so the uncle brought her to me. He said, she has one exam to take. And if she fails, she'll be deported. She will be deported back to Cameroon. You are aware of her. Praise the Lord. And when she came, she couldn't speak English. She speaks French. So I had a translator come in. In my office. And I asked her, who are you? When you were leaving Cameroon, what happened? I said, when you were leaving Cameroon, what happened? And that was by the Holy Ghost. She said, Daddy, she spoke in French and the guy was translating. He said, my parents said, call a native doctor. Call people. They drew a circle. They put her in the circle and they set fire around it. He said, the fire burnt while she was inside the circle. I said, what happened to her? He said, she was inside the circle and the fire was burning around her. I said, for what purpose? He said, it's for protection. He said, the fire burned, didn't touch her until it died. And then when she came out, they gave her something, one black thing. They said to her, keep it wherever you go in Germany. And then she took that thing, she came to Germany with it. She was in the house of the uncle with that thing. The uncle didn't know. Praise the Lord. And I said, tell me more. And then she talks about the nightmare, the attack, and everything she had. And I said to her, the translator started crying. And I asked him, you that is crying, you are not the one to minister to her. Why are you crying? He said, Pastor, that he's just so touched. Why would people do this? The people did this as a protection. They didn't think they were hurting her. Praise the Lord. And then one day when the anointing was strong, I called her out, ministered to her, prayed for her, and all that. Then I called the uncle. I said, there is one black thing in your house from her. You push your and search it out, burn it. He said, what? I said, there's one black. He said, it's not possible. I said, why? He said, pastor, this girl loses everything I give to her. So she can't come from Cameroon with something and still keep it. Because everything in her hand, including her passport, keeps, 
missing. Including the passport keep missing. It's not possible that this girl will keep something from Cameroon for how many years? He said, it's not possible. I asked the girl, is it in your room? She said, yes. You know where it is? He said, yes. The man now became afraid. I said, let me tell you. Go to the room. Let her get that in. Take it downstairs. Get it burnt. Don't throw it away. Get it burnt. So they went home. The girl just didn't look for it. Just brought it out. The man said, it's, it's not possible. In my house. Praise the Lord. Many of you that have house girls, you don't know what they carry. You just carry house girl. House girl. You have no idea what they carry. They are more than house girl. You are carrying people that are palace made in another world. They are maids in another world. And so they appeared as a house girl to destroy your family. And then I ministered to the girl. The girl went back. The exam for that week, she took that exam. And that was make or break exam. And she passed that exam colorfully. Praise the Lord. And then she moved on to go to the University in Nuremberg. She went to the University in Nuremberg. They were supposed to deport her. So I understand what is happening to her. She will pass jam next year. Amen. The devil is a wicked entity. Set a time for your progress in your life. The vision is for an appointed time. How can you be a young person? You don't have a plan when you are 30. You don't have a plan when you are 40. You don't have a plan when you are 50. The wall said at 65, you will retire. And you are 40. You have no plan. 50, you have no plan. I became a landlord in this, in this city before the age of 30. And that's something. Praise the Lord. That is something. And I said to myself, at the age of 55, I will end business. I will be in full-time ministry. I said to myself, I was teaching it back those days in What Alive. You can ask her sitting there, Pat, she was my PA. Ajawo was in the technical department. There are still people you can go and ask. And that time when I was teaching them, I said to them, don't just have children because you can have children. Have what you can afford. Praise the Lord. I was saying, born what you can afford. Where is Ajawo? They will laugh and make joke about it. Where is he? I will teach. I said, the cost of raising a child in Nigeria will continue to go higher and higher and higher. Look at him. Look at his stomach. Praise the Lord. Did you hear that message or not? You heard it. Did you... You put it into action. And so when I just woke up saying that the children eat too much, I said, whose fault is it? He said, the children can eat. I said, whose fault is it? Did they burn themselves? He said, the one that paid him so much one time was that he left soup. He left soup saying that when he gets home. <laughs> he said, by the time you go, they say, chica. <laughs> As... Where is he paying you? Are you not a father? Eh? Eh, what's the problem? Whatever plan you had for the soup, the boy had another plan for the soup. And his own plan came to pass before your own. Shout hallelujah. And it's still the same message I will tell everybody. Born what you can train. Born what you can train. Stop believing that your uncle will train them. Are you hearing me? Stop believing that your brother will train them. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Just born what you can take care of. When you give birth to one, as you push him, push him, push him, at a certain level, you find that you still have change. You can go for a second. But if the one is shaking you up and down, ha, 
call your wife, honey, as much as I love you, one is one. And if you don't know any scripture to use, tell your wife, remember that God only had one son. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And tell your wife, we should be like God. Praise the Lord. We should be like, how many children did he have? One. One. Praise the Lord. And that one, you draw his ear. You pull his ear. Because when you have one, you cannot afford to miss. Is it not true? When they are three, that's where you gamble. If OBK does not make it, Jonah will make it. If Jonah does not make it, Micah can make it. You hear your life. If one does not make it, may you never give birth to a failure. Yeah. May you never give birth to a failure. Yeah. A new creation is not supposed to burn a failure. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Our children shall call us blessed. Don't worry, go back. You had the message. And I said, at the age of 55, I will stop with business. But do you know what? It stopped even before the age of 50. Things change. Why? Because of the passion in my heart. Passion in my heart for God. When you develop passion in your heart for God, you will make it. You will make it. You will make it. Praise the Lord. Now, Rachel, from now, you join the pastor's usher. So move that way. Carry your Bible and everything. Praise the Lord. Join pastor's usher. And you, come back here now. Praise the Lord. We make progress. And if you have not made progress, check again. Check again. In the next six months, from now to the end of the year, there are many people that can start something in this church. Amen? Mommy, I spoke with you, and I said we'll have a meeting, right? Instead of going to a village, let's talk here. So, Pastor Zik, Tuesday, arrange a meeting with mommy. We're supposed to have met at the end of the month. So, we'll discuss on Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Remember, 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 Paul said to Timothy, give yourself to this thing fully. He said, give yourself. He said, he said, so that your failure will be evident to all. Is that what he says? What did he say if you give yourself to it? He said, your advancement, your progress will become evident to all. You can give yourself to it. And Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, he said, ask whatever you will and it shall be given unto you. What's gospelology if you abide in him and you are, his word abide in you? You can exercise liberty and dominion. This year is our year of liberty and dominion. Praise the Lord. It's our year of what? Liberty and dominion. A Christian should transform. We are meant to go from glory to glory. We are not people that are victims. No. If things have not worked in your life, see your pastor. If you have stagnated for a long while, see your pastor. We are not born unto stagnation. We are born into progression. You shouldn't be saying that everything you touch, it fails. Everything you touch, it fails. The question, the number one thing, like Jesus said, check your heart. The Ethiopian now asks the question, what is it that hinders me? What is it that hinders me from being baptized? What is it that hinders you from flowing in the things of the Spirit? What is it that limits you? What is it that stagnates you? What is it that impoverishes you? And sometimes we give the devil unnecessary credit. We say devil this, devil that, devil that, devil that, devil that. You know? You want to have a house of your own. May, and meanwhile, you are a, a tenant in somebody's house. And you are damaging the house. 
you are spoiling the house. A handle of the door will break. You will leave it like that and you are a Christian. And you read from the scripture, Jesus said, if you are not faithful with another man's own, who will give you your own? Full stop. So, the way I treat somebody's house will determine whether I will get my own or not. Simple. Simple. And so, you live in somebody's house. Repent it from time to time. Repay it from time to time. You know why? You are sowing seed for your own house. You are sowing seed. You are landlord. You are landlady. Bless him from time to time. Christmas, send him gift. New Year, send him gift. Easter, send him gift. No, do you understand how these things work? You can't have a harvest you have not planted a seed for. You can't be a landlord if you have not sown the seed for it. You go out of your way. You keep the compound clean. You go out of your way. You make sure that what nobody else will do, you do it. You do it. Because Jesus said, let your light shine. You have time. The vision is for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. Do you know, between the Old Testament and New Testament, do you know how, how long it was in the life of Israel? Between Malachi and Matthew. You know how long it was? The Bible calls it the silence years of Jehovah. From Malachi to Matthew, it was 400 years in the life of Israel. No prophet, no judge was ever raised. God just kept quiet. God just kept quiet. Why? Because it comes to a point where God looks at a life of somebody and just ignore you. You want to be lawless, go ahead and have your way. You know how many people that died in that 400 years? It's called the silent years of Jehovah over Israel. It was 400 years from Malachi to Matthew. When, that was, when John the Baptist came, there was great excitement that God has suddenly remembered his people. And that was why John the Baptist didn't come with passion. He came with a great zeal. He was a burning and a shining lamp. He couldn't tolerate any nonsense. He came as a firebrand. And that was why he couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't control himself when he saw sin. The nation has been 400 years without a prophet, without a judge, without any man of God. And God said, okay, I will send John the Baptist. What did they still do to John the Baptist? They still killed him. And so they have not changed from what they used to be. They have not changed. And the killing still continue in Israel today. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What do you want to do? Time is money. Health is money. If you waste two of them, you are wasting destiny. Praise the Lord. You should be a way maker because God makes way. You make a platform for people to prosper. You create opportunities for people. You look for a job for two, three years. And job didn't come to you, then you create jobs. You create jobs. You invent something. How can a young person, you are 25, you say you can't get a job. No. No. Create a job. A man went to see Papa those days. He told Papa to pray for him that things are not going well with him. Papa said, what's the problem? He said, no work, no business, no that. As he finished, Papa said he followed him to go to, to see him out. As he came out, he was opening the car. Papa asked him, who owns this car? He said, it's me. It's your car? He said, yes. He said, you are living in a job and you say you don't have a job. Papa told him, from now, now, oh yeah, go to Yenakbaja. Load and drop. Load and drop. He said, tomorrow morning, wear shirt, wear tie. Be a different driver. Be different. Praise the Lord. And so he did that day. He was shocked the money he ended up with. And then the following day, he wore shirt and tie, like Papa advised him. And he went out. Everybody wants to deal with a gentleman. 
You think it's everybody that wants to deal with Aboro? You wear your shirt, you lift the collar up like this. And you say, enter, enter. I will not enter because I don't know where you are coming from. Praise the Lord. You are a young man. You have earring here. What will I take you, a woman or a man? I will avoid you. You have tattoos all over you. No. Who are you? Your trousers is falling off here. And you say it's fashion. And so your underwear is halfway, your trousers is halfway, and you are walking like this. What did I call it? Poverty in a hunger. Praise the Lord. Poverty in what? In a hunger. And what happens with hunger? After you remove the cloth and put the hunger back. Praise the Lord. Tell yourself, I must be a success. And I told you yesterday, success is not a destination. It's a pathway. It's the journey you take. That's what success is. And I told you, don't be afraid of failure. If you fail, listen, I would rather follow a man that has failed than follow one that never failed. I would rather follow the one that failed severally. You know how many times Churchill failed? You know how many times Buhari tried to be president? In this country, Buhari, every time he tried, he failed. He tried, he failed, he tried, he failed. And then finally he encountered somebody that said, I will give you what you are looking for, but you will give me what I'm looking for. Praise the Lord. If you persist, there will always be somebody God will send to you. Oh, this one you are talking about a Muslim, a Muslim, a Muslim, a Muslim. You that is Christian, don't talk to you. Where are you? No, you that is Christian, talk to you. Where are you? And then Buhari cooperated. Cooperated with those that be. Cooperated with them. He used to be a very principled and disciplined man, but he realized that for him to become president, he needs to play ball with some people. That is the truth of that business, politics. If you want to become, there are people you must agree with. And the moment he agreed with them, they made him president. And so when he was ending, they said, we are taking it back. <laughs> and all of you are making less vote. They say, you can vote as much as you want. They've already decided who will become. It's very simple. It's very simple. Politics is about one thing. What is it? Money. And money and money, full stop. Are you hearing me? That's what politics is all about. Even in America, politics is about what? Money. If not, somebody like Donald Trump should not come near the White House. If not, he shouldn't come near the White House. Politics is not about integrity. It's about monetary. Are you hearing me? We, we pray and fast. We pray and fast about who will win the election. <laughs> we profess. <laughs> what happened? They still got their man. Isn't it? If you want to get the harvest, you need to sow the seed for it. We can't even come together as an entity. Churches, we can't come together. We have enough money in the church to determine who will be president. You know what we do? Everybody keep their bank account closed and then we say, let us pray. The ungodly will never rule us. Be praying, their money is talking. No, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? All the prophets that prophesied that inauguration, there will be cool, there will be that. There will, there on the, so, I mean, shouldn't they be ashamed? Shouldn't they be ashamed? Thank God, Tinibu didn't say a word. Some even, some even went as far as saying that, ah, that what will happen on the, what was it? The swearing in day. They prophesied a matter of prophecies. 
National television, online platform. If anything, those ministries should close down. Because we need to save ourselves. One person said, one person, a top-ranking person said that the election has proven that the church is down here she, she from God. What a shame. Praise the Lord. And thank God for people like Papa Deboye. He said, I have not heard from God. I will not speak. No, our generation don't believe that God can be silent over a matter. No, we don't believe. So if God doesn't think we speak for God. But the Bible said God was silent for 400 years. He didn't touch him. And when you sing, ancient of days, as fresh as you are, as fresh as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as fresh as you are, as fresh as you are, you will never change. You are telling God you are 40. You are getting too old. Lord, at the age of 45, I must get married. Oh. <laughs> ah, to show people I'm not serving you in vain. Who? <laughs> Who should God show? You don't want to show people. We are not called for show. Amen? What if God does not want you to get married? Don't say that to me. I must get married. Why? Ah, ah, ah. Don't say that to ah, ah, ah. So, ah. He said, We shall decree it and it shall come to pass. Me, I've decreed my husband, Steve, must marry me. Look at your life. You are decreeing Steve. Why Steve? Why not Job? No, why not Job? Remember the suffering of Job? He said, God forbid. Say timing. Timing. If any of you seated here, we have a 10 year plan of transformation starting from now. In exactly 10 years, you will not be who you are today. If any of you, any of you, will be provoked in this season, and you say to yourself, and you say to yourself, I will change my life. I am I'm not going to bother about Nigeria. I am going to bother about my... Do you know that many people are like Nigeria? Every president, they blame him. And now people are already saying that. <laughs> but Harry was even better than Tinibu. Did you ever think that anybody would say that? They're already saying that ah, <laughs> maybe Buhari was not so bad. Though. Tinibu is... Tinibu is... And so, that's the way your life is. You blame others for where you are except yourself. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? After the age of 16, you are responsible for where you are. No, you are responsible for where you are. If you say, I'm not going to be a failure, so shall it be. Praise the Lord. You can, you can become something better. You can become something. You've been going for anointing for breakthrough from church to church, from church to church. They've poured you anointing on you know, till you have lost the smell of a human being. Sit down with the word. Take the word of God. Chew the word. And produce your destiny from the word. I said it, anywhere I find myself, I can never be a failure. You know why? God is universal. If I end up in Afghanistan, I already know the type of business I will do. Just one, one pair shoe, one, one leg, one, one leg, one, one leg. There are too many amputees there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I already know it. Mine blow up, they will lose leg. Somebody will shoot, they will lose that. Somebody, so as you are going, I will already order a container, one one leg shoe, odd pairs, odd, 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 odd. I, I said, I said, I said, I am landing there, ship a container to me there. As I'm landing, I'm clearing. Hello? 
<laughs> Are you hearing me? I will find somebody that wants to give it away. Odd pairs. It's useless. Amen? Praise the Lord. No, it sounds funny, but I'm telling you the truth. You have a place where you can go and start that business. You just relocate that you start a business. One time we were in Abuja, the driver that took us inside the car, he was wearing winter jacket. I asked him, bro, he said, please, okay. In Abuja here, he said, it's very cold. Ah! It's very cold in this heat. So, I didn't know. Winter jacket is big business in Abuja. Even in the uh, Joss area. Is it not true? And you are talking. And you are talking. And the winter jacket, nobody wants it in the summer. So, I'm even talking about Abuja. Some of you wear winter jacket. Where is bright? You wear winter jacket in the hot sun, isn't it? Marriage is good, though. He doesn't wear it again since he got married. In those days, he was single. Bright will wear a winter jacket. I will look at him. I said, Bright, are you okay? He said, very okay. He said, very okay. I am sweating with T-shirt, and the guy will wear a winter jacket. Cool. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so there are many brights in Lagos, even. Many, many brights. And then after that, I've seen more people that wear it. In the in it than here, more people. Even this one that's laughing here, Paul. Even, even Peter. How many of them? Paris. Paris on is even extreme. Look at him. Paris on is extreme. He will be walking in the hot sun with a winter jacket. I mean, listen, there are enough crazy business in the, uh, enough people to support crazy business in Lagos. This boy will wear winter jacket walking in the sun. I asked him, are you not hot? He said, no. He says, he says, it's cool. He says, it's cool. Paris, where do you buy them? Oh, okay, from the container. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. You can develop business out of everything. Call upon the name of the Lord. He will breathe upon that idea. You will be amazed at the ideas. Ideas that God can convert. Praise the Lord. When the word of the Lord is with you, you will progress. Locate the word. Locate, listen, locate the word of God and the word of the word of God will never fail. Listen, let me just share this before we close. And this is what happened in, inside that inside this house. Inside this house. I think it was when was it? I called uh, Elizabeth. I called Elizabeth to, to come and help me do something. And then I didn't tell her what exactly. So the way she was sounding, she needed her. I said, okay, don't worry. So normally, you know, I wanted her to come and count some money because I don't like to touch money. So she didn't come. So now I have to go through the process of counting the money myself, which I didn't like. So when I finished, and then I was supposed to see somebody that was supposed to change some money. And the guy came. Normally, mommy handled this, but this particular day, mommy was not around. So I will have to deal with the guy. And you see, it's always good to have your loved one around because there are little things they do that you don't want to get involved. But that day, she, she went to market. Praise the Lord. So when the man came, we talked. And then the man changed the, ma the, the money. So from the rate he gave mommy and the rate he gave me, there was something like 170,000 extra from it. So later on in the day, Elizabeth and I showed up, and I wanted to take tea or coffee in the PDA's room. We were there. I said to her, I called you to come and do something for me. And I said, you were not available. I said, how I wish you were available. You would have made 10K from it. 
I said, I would have given you 10K. She said, Daddy, you still give me the money. Uh uh. You still give me the money. I said, For what? You didn't do the work. Why would I give you 10K? Praise the Lord. And she was dragging, and PDA was inside her washroom anyway. So while we dragged the matter, I said to her, Listen, I will ask PDA when she comes out. I said, when we ask her, whatever she do, whatever she say, that's what I will follow. Because I was so sure what PDA would say. <laughs> At least I thought so. Praise the Lord. I was so sure that PDA would come out and say, Daddy, because she didn't do it, she doesn't get the money. Full stop. Is that not simple? <laughs> that's normal because she's a business manager. Then she came out. And then she asked what happened. And then I explained the situation. And then she came close. She said, Daddy, you know what we do? I said, what? He said, let us do it by age. <laughs> I said, do what? She said, you give me 40. You give Elizabeth 30. And then you keep the 100. And then Elizabeth jumped up. He said, praise God. Praise. I said, before you praise God, hold on. He said, Daddy, you said whatever she said, that's what you would do. And so we talked about, I said, okay, 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 you win. That's just my word, though. And God's word is stronger, greater, bigger. So the story didn't end there. So I said, okay, you get the 40, she gets the 30, the many 100. Praise the Lord. Get settled. And then one... Was it in the evening or the following day? We gathered together. They told the story to mommy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mommy now said, ah, honey, me that arranged the deal, me that made the call, me that did it. What did I get? I said to her, honey, all I have is, she said, no, 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 no. Where is my own? It was not a joke. And she went to market, she called me, she said I should send 60K. <laughs> and I know that that 60K is based on that 170. Praise the Lord. I said, what? He said I should send 60K. <laughs> Hallelujah. I sent the 60K. And then I sat down as if I had known. I would have paid a 10K. And nobody would have had the matter. I would have kept 160. As the matter went, I kept only 40K out of the 170 I made. Praise the Lord. Why am I sharing this? A man and his word are the same. God's word, when you locate it, will change you. God's word will never fail in our lives. The only thing is when we fail to act it, then we become victims. Forget what anybody say. Take what God say. Apply what God say. With time, God will remember you. He says the vision is for an appointed time. To who? Those that keep the word. Those that follow the word. God will always remember you. Stand on your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Lift up your hand and tell God that your vision will be restored. Your dreams will be restored. Your goals will be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ, there will be a restoration of purpose in your life. Of purpose in your life. A restoration of purpose in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Purpose. 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 At the end of this seminar tomorrow, there will be a restoration. There will be a restoration. There will be a restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. The dreams of your life will come back. The goals of your life will come back. Your destiny will be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is your season of visitation. The Lord will remember you. The Lord will visit you. There will be a revival in you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. Somebody here. Your business idea is coming back to life. The business you have forgotten. God will remind you of it. And as you bring it out. So shall it lift you up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. In Jesus precious name. In Jesus precious name. There is a time. For everything. There is a time for every business. This is your time for your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. It is. It is. You will not fail. Time will not fail you. You will arise. And you will make progress. In Jesus precious name. Lift up your hand and give God glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. For the Lord is good. 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 Today the Lord has remembered you. The Lord has remembered your plans. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Remember that tomorrow's service is 9.30 the meeting of 5.30 has been shifted for the morning service. So we are not going to have any meeting again tomorrow evening. Praise the Lord. So let us all be here tomorrow morning and make sure that we get all that the Lord had for us because tomorrow will be different. Amen. Because remember that the last day is always greater. Amen. Amen. And you will see the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Eze, it is wonderful to have you here. God bless you. Clap for him. He's part of us, a member of the family. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. You will only see blessings. Amen. Blessings will always locate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Remember that even after you had this, you don't have plan. You will still fail. Time works with plan. Remember what I said to you. Right place, right time, right plan. Amen? Right place, right time, right plan. You have that, you will be a success. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Remember also that tomorrow we have our feeding program as we continue to feed people and having fellowship when we gather together. So just make extra time tomorrow when you are coming because the seminar is ending tomorrow so that we don't have to come in the evening. Amen? So the service may take about 30 minutes, 40 minutes longer tomorrow so that we can cover as much as we want to cover by the grace of God. And then the word is our life. And our life is in the word. In Jesus' precious name. Let us share the grace together. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Most High God forever and ever. God bless you.